Boxing King Media in association with Boxer. Uh, delighted to have with me Hamza Shiraz. Hamza, um, good to see you. Uh, how are we keeping? Alhamdulillah, I can't complain. Can't complain. Um, it's always good to see you as well, bro. Uh, how's Poland been treating you? You know what, I'll be honest with you, I, expect, I, I expected it to be a proper rough, you know, that eastern block type of build, concrete buildings and nothing. But listen, it's exceeded my expectations and I'm... I'm loving it, man. I'm not loving it. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump on that as well. I yeah. think it, I expected it to be exactly the same. Yeah. And when I got here, it's a really nice village, clean, tidy, and the weather's very nice as well. Yeah, no, it's amazing, man. It's amazing. And every, all my supporters have come here. Everyone's, I think everyone's landed today and they're landing tomorrow as well. So, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm at home. Yeah, I saw your Instagram during the week, uh, doing runs with a lot of members of the team. So a lot of them kind of. I think saw the opportunity, yeah. Europe, Poland's not far to yeah. come out, but expecting a big crowd uh, turn out the rest of the week as well. For me, yeah, for me, inshallah, yeah. But listen, these are the people, you got to remember when you're in England, they're the same people who support me, but you're doing your own thing in England. So they, they turn up to weigh-ins and, and press conferences. But over here, when you're away from home, everyone's together, 24 hours, everyone's together. So we can do a lot more things together. And it's like my, almost my opportunity to give back to them for, for supporting me. Do you know what I mean? So it's good and yeah, I'm enjoying it. Man. Why, um, obviously I know you're fighting on Saturday night, we'll come to the opponent on that in a moment, but it's been a bit of a delay yeah. in terms of, uh, I saw some stuff, I think you were supposed to fight around June, July. Yes. So um, why the delay on this card? The, the delay, I don't know. I, I, if I could answer, I'd, I'd let you know, but for whatever reason. I think, it, I think it was the transition from BT Sport to TNT Sport and it changed the um, fight dates and one, from my understanding anyway. Um, I was in America at the time and then I'd done, done a five week camp there then I had to come back home for a bit. So I come home for about three weeks and then I finished off my, my camp which has led me to here today. So I thought why not as soon as the opportunity come to fight away from home. I've done it once before and I enjoyed it. So I thought listen, even though we are going into the lion's den if you want to call it, it's something you've got to do in boxing to, to see where you're at and to, to be a great. I mean, this transition that you, you've done for many years now, where you train in America, are you, are you enjoying it? Have you, are you used to it now? Because a, a lot of people won't understand this and may not appreciate, especially fans, that it costs a lot of money. Lot of money. It's, it's not cheap yeah. to, to have a camp in a foreign country yeah. and then obviously have specialist people around you to support you and train you. Yeah, no, of course. When people hear how much it is, they think the kid's crazy or he, he's investing so, however much into him and he's not going to make it and this, that, the other. But at the end of the day, myself and my team believe in my ability. So until the day until the day comes and I do get there, inshallah, I can look back and say, listen, the investment was worth it. It was worth it, um, and I'm I'm in a position where I've got the financial help to be able to go out there and get and make it happen and get it done. And Hamdai, it's pay, it's paying its dividends. Are we only just seeing glimpses of Hamza Shiraz and? kind of the Ricky Funes connection, is there so much more still to come? Of course, of course, listen, I only just turned 24. I've only just turned 24, been boxing uh, professionally since I was 18 years old. I've been with Ricky for two years, and listen, any boxing coach can tell you, in two years you're not gonna learn, you're gonna learn a lot, but when it comes to developing habits and certain aspects of how you maneuver in the ring, it takes years, it takes years and it takes um, consistency as well. So as long as I stay consistent with anything, I should, in the next, I'd say, 24 months, I should be fighting for a world title, inshallah. How many, uh, how many rounds did Justin Bieber last? Bro, the only story is, he, was, he came to the gym and he wanted to spar and I had my younger cousin with me at the time. Put him in there with him. And he was just like trying to take lumps out of uh, Justin. So I, go, I had to stop it with Ricky and I go, yo, I go, yo, stop this, stop this, get him out, get him out. And then I got in there just to like help him move around and whatnot. Uh, and we've only done like three or four rounds. But listen, it was much better than I thought it'd be. You know, when you see him and you think pretty boy, singer, he, could, he ain't got hands, but he's got hands, man. So yeah, no, and it was a good experience, you know what I mean? Like, rubbing shoulders with them people. Obviously not the boxing aspect of it, but more just understanding how someone on that level of being a celebrity actually operates. I mean, was there some sort of deal he jumps in the ring with you and you jump on the track maybe? Uh, can you imagine a mixtape? HS and JB. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think I'll be singing anytime soon, bro. River Wilson Ben obviously was your last opponent. Yeah. Do you feel like that was one of your best performances that we've seen? Uh, I'd say so. I'd say so. Because um, everything went to plan. Everything went to plan. And 
if I do the same Saturday, the same thing should happen, inshallah. So, yeah, man, and I, like, like you said, it, it just shows mine and Ricky's relationship coming to fruition, coming to slowly just, not total, but just a little bit, maybe 10% or something, something like that, 5, 10%. But, um, yeah, if I, if I continue doing what I'm doing, Saturday night should be the same, or if not, a better performance. Sometimes fighters want to progress through a certain weight category, yeah. win the world title, and move up. Hamza, I think you're taller than me. I'm six two and a bit, right? I don't know how you're making this weight. Yeah, no, listen. I always said at 154 I want to win a world title, but the weight was too hard for me. But come come to that point whenever I had my last fight the weight and I said, listen, I can't make this no more. So far, 160 is good. And I'm very honest in my interview as well. I'm not one of them guys to lie, oh weight's fine and whatnot. Um, it's not easy, but it's doable and I'm making it happen. So like I said, if I can if I can hold this weight for the next 24 months and I don't put on too much muscle mass or go over the top in terms of diet and whatnot, I should, like I said, fight for my first world title at 160. I mean, you said that you feel comfortable, but yeah. ultimately your team around your strength and conditioning, do they yeah. say that they might get the best out of you at 168, maybe with a bit more muscle and maybe more power? 168, it hasn't been mentioned yet. It will definitely be mentioned, uh, like I said, within the next few years. But as for now, 160 is where I'm performing best because I make the transi transition from 168 to 160 is a difficult bit. So I, if, I, if I was to fight at 168 now, I'd make it eating like normal. So you almost need that little bit, of, a little bit of struggle to, to get down to the weight to ensure you're fighting at the right weight. But yeah, listen, I think I could, I'll end up finishing fighting at 175 or even touching cruiserweight, bro. Uh, I bet you'll enjoy that as well. <laughs> um, let's talk about Saturday night. Um, you're fighting a Ukrainian yep. in Poland. He's undefeated. I know you're a man who doesn't like to take your eye off the ball, but yeah. obviously he's got Ukrainian Independence Day today as well. Yeah. So he's got a, another reason to fight for. So is it extra important for you to eyes on the prize? Of course, of course, listen. He is not only representing his team or his, uh, or his people, he's representing a whole nation who's going through a tough time right now. So you've got to understand where his mentality is going to be. He's going to be wanting to do everything in his capability to win. But listen, at the same time, I'm not here to make up numbers. I'm not here. I never have been. I'm not here to be an opponent or to be a good name for him to get on his record. That's not what I'm about. I'm, I've come as a cha champion and I've got a champion mentality and um, like I said if I do everything right do everything correctly um, it should be in for a rude awakening what is the what is the plan obviously I know you're still with Frank Warren um, there's a lot of money being thrown around thrown around in boxing from all sorts of different angles yeah. um, commit to Frank yeah. and then just see where, where things flow yeah of course of course for now listen Frank I always say I said to all my interviews he gave me the opportunity when no one did my amateur career wasn't wasn't great. I had loads of fights. I had loads loads of experience, um, but in terms of titles and whatnot, it was it wasn't up to scratch of how the boys who are getting signed nowadays was. So I can only I can only be loyal. Do you know what I mean? I can only be loyal. And um, like you said, just see where it goes, really and truly. As for now, I'm I'm with Frank, and I see myself being with Frank for the foreseeable future. Got to ask you about uh, Adam uh, Hammond makes yeah. his uh, debut. Um, not too much about him, but. Yeah. Obviously, his father, uh, yeah. a British icon, a British legend. How much of a um, kind of, uh, not an idol, probably the wrong word, but someone you look up to, how much was he part of the journey for you? He, he, listen, he was the man. He was the man. Like, if you look at the likes of him, Amir Khan, they were just, at the time, in terms of Arab and South Asian boxing, they were the leading advocates for it. But um, just to be on, on the same card where his legacy should continue is an honour in itself. Even though it's not him, him himself, it's Adam, and Adam saying he wants to be his own fighter, fair, which is fair enough because, listen, he's always going to be compared to his old man. But just to, just to be there and be in the presence of such, such greatness and such someone who's achieved a lot in the sport is, is an honour honor in itself. You talk about there about South Asian and, and uh, kind of the Arab world as well. Eddie Hearn had a card on the weekend, very multicultural. Um, you said there a moment ago as well that back in your days it wasn't as easy to sign with yeah, a promoter. No, it now, now it, it seems like if you've got some ability and you yeah. sell tickets, yeah. promoters will run to you. But what kind of do you make of the card on Saturday where we had so many fights and Ibrahim Sulman was one and others? But there's, there's like a huge bunch of them coming through now. Loads now, man. Loads, which is a, a great thing. I've always said, 
where people are referring to us as the minority in the sport, that's not going to be the case anymore. That's not going to be the case. And you got to you got to look at the caliber of fighters within the South. They're all good fighters, man. They're not someone who you look at you think, oh, he's mediocre or he will do all right. It's all kids who like you look at them, you think, okay, cool. They've got potential to go all the way, which is a great thing as well, man. And it's, it's good to see. It's good to see. And who knows, one day there could be a an all South Asian card. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine how wild that'd be? <laughs> but yeah, man, it's it's great to see. Especially if you get maybe two South Asians uh, in the same weight cat category oh, fighting each other. <laughs> that's a that's a recipe for disaster, bro. You know how it goes. <laughs> um, can I ask you your stable mate? Um, I say stable mate, someone you obviously Frank signed as well. It's Daniel Dubois. Yes. Huge challenge for him to take on. Yeah. Arguably, probably one of the greatest fighters in, in our in our times, yeah. recent times. What do you think? How did that fight break down? It's the heavyweight division. It's the heavyweight division. Um, anything can happen. And when you're being written off by so many people, if you look at everyone saying the same thing, like what I'm about to say, but everyone's saying the same thing, but if we break it down, which you will, you understand where I'm coming from. It's the heavyweight division, he's in for a puncher's chance. If you break down the facts, he's younger, he's fresher, no one can com really compare him to how Usyk fought AJ because it doesn't make sense. Although they're similar, they're not exactly the same. Like I said, Dubois has got youth on, his, or youth on his side and he's got nothing to lose. People were expecting AJ to win. You got I me, mean, people were expecting him to deal with Usyk. So now the shoot for Usyk, the shoe's almost on the other foot. He's the guy who's expected to win. And Dubois should, if anything, adopt the mentality Usyk had going into the Joshua fight. So if he does that, he can, he can almost just go in and rip up the script, man, and just tear it up and bring it back for British boxing. And bring it back for Frank Warren, more importantly, and Queensbury Promotions. Exactly that. We'll bring it back together. Hamza, uh, appreciate your time. Um, yeah, uh, we hadn't seen you float about too much this week, so we thought, you know what, we'll come and see you at the hotel. Yeah. Uh, so appreciate your time. Wish you all the best on Saturday, and I'm sure we'll catch up with you uh, after the fight. Thank you very much, Frank, for your time. Man. I'm the Chiraz for Boxing Comedia. Thank you.